Hi, this is Nat with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started validating forms with jQuery Validation plugin, which is available at jQueryValidation.org. I'll be showing you how to use jQuery Validation plugin with two different forms, a very simple common form, and then a somewhat more complex sign-up form. Then I'll show you how to find additional validation methods and to create your own. And finally, I'll show you how you can localize your messages. Let's start with a simple common form. You can see it has four fields, name, email, URL, and a comment field. The name is required and it must be at least two characters long. The email is also required and it must be a valid email. The URL is optional, but if you enter one, it must be a valid URL. And a comment is required. Let's just submit it without entering anything. You can see we get three errors for the three required fields. Okay, let's enter some data. Okay, so we filled in data for the three required fields. Now if we submit, the form submits. Let's go back, and this time we'll fill in all fields, but the email and URL will be invalid. Notice that as soon as we entered invalid data, we got error messages. Now, if I go to name, which remember must be two characters, and make it just one character, and tab out, you can see I get an error message there as well. I'm going to refresh. This time I put the cursor in the name field, but I won't enter any data. I'll just go to the next field. Notice how it did not give me an error. Now I'll enter data, tab out, tab back, delete the data, and notice that as soon as it becomes invalid, I get an error message. So the validation code is checking to see if I've tried to enter anything. If I haven't yet tried, then it's not going to give me an error message. But if I've tried, and then the data somehow becomes invalid, it will give me an error message. Watch with the email. That's valid, so no error message. I'm going to go back, and as soon as the email becomes invalid, I get an error message. Now it's OK. Same thing with the URL. Invalid. It wants the HTTP. Now it's valid. If I go back and remove the HTTP, I get the error message until I make it valid. Very nice. If I submit, it tells me where all my errors are. When I correct those errors, I can submit. Okay, let's go take a look at the code. So here's the code for our common form. You can see it has two style sheets for formatting and then two script tags. The first script tag just brings in jQuery and the second script tag brings in our jQuery validation plugin. Let's scroll down and look at the HTML form. You can see it has our four fields, the name field, the email field, the URL field, and the common field. The name, email, and common field are all required, and the name has a min length set to two. Notice that the email field type is email, and the URL field type is URL. The code will key off those to make sure the user enters a valid email and a valid URL. Let's scroll down. And you can see here we call validate on the comment form. That combined with the special attributes in the form fields is what does all the magic. Very simple. Now let's take a look at a form that's a little more complex. It has some of the same features as our other form, some required fields and an email, but it also has some new things, a username, a password and a confirmed password, and then it has a couple checkboxes. I'll go ahead and submit without filling it out. And you can see we get our errors. Notice though that the errors are customized. Please enter your first name, please enter your last name, and so on. Only the email error is generic. This field is required. I'll go ahead and fill the form out now. And you can see the errors go away. And this is a cool little feature added using jQuery where we suggest a username based on the first name and last name. I'll keep that username. I'll enter a password. And now I need to confirm that password. And then I need to enter an email. Notice the error changes. Now it says please enter a valid email address. I will. 
I'll agree to the policy and then I would like to receive the newsletter and as soon as I do that I get some more options watch if I just check one of them and submit I get an error saying please select at least two topics so I'll select another the error goes away I can submit and it submits successfully let's go take a look at the code here's the HTML document the head is pretty much the same as in the comment form the only difference is that we have this new script tag bringing in signupform.js. We'll take a look at that in a minute. First, let's look at the HTML form. Again, this is very similar to the common form. One thing to notice is that the input fields do not have a required attribute. We'll use JavaScript to set that property. It has a password and a confirmed password field. It has an email field and that does have type set to email and then it has a checkbox named agree. You'll see in the JavaScript that will force the user to check that box. And then it has a newsletter checkbox. That's optional, but if the user checks it, this field set below called newsletter topics will come into view. Initially, it will be hidden. The user will then have to select at least two of those topics. And we'll take a look at the JavaScript to see how we enforce that. So let's go to signupform.js. Whereas in the common form, we call the validate method on the common form right in the HTML page. Here we're doing it within the JavaScript using the ready method of the document object. You can see when the document is ready, we call the validate method of the signup form. We pass that validate method a couple of properties. One is a rules object, and the other is a messages object. We use the rules object to set the validation rules. You can see we set first name and last name to required. Username is also set to required, but it's done a little differently. Instead of just setting it to a string required, we set username to an object. And one of the properties of that object is required true. We use another property, min length, to make the user enter at least two characters for their username. We do the same thing with password, except min length is five in this case. And we do it with confirm password as well. But confirm password has another property, equal to. And you can see that it's equal to, in quotes, pound password. That will ensure that the user confirms the password correctly. We set two properties in the email object. Required is true and email is true. That forces the user to enter a value, which must be a valid email address. For topic, we are only going to require that if the newsletter is checked. You see how the jQuery validation plugin provides a neat way of doing this. We just do pound newsletter colon checked as the value for required instead of true. So if the newsletter checkbox is checked, that will force the user to enter at least two topics. That's where the min length comes in, min length colon two. And lastly, we make the agree checkbox required. The messages are just custom messages we enter. First name and last name or just please enter your first name, please enter your last name. The username messages will be different depending on what the error is. If they didn't enter anything, it will say please enter a username. If they entered something, but it's not long enough, it'll say your username must consist of at least two characters. Same thing with the password. And the confirm password has a third property equal to. If they retype the password incorrectly, they'll get an error saying please enter the same password as above. For agree and topic, we also have custom messages. Notice that there is no custom message for email, and that's why it falls back on the generic message we saw when we filled out the form. This little bit of code runs as soon as the user focuses on the username field. All it does is get the first name and last name value, and then concatenates them with a period in between, and sets the result to this dot value, the value of the username field. And the last thing we do is handle the newsletter. In line 61, we just create a variable called newsletter, which contains the newsletter field. And then in line 63, we set a variable called initial, which will evaluate to true or false, depending on whether the newsletter checkbox is checked. In line 64, we either add or remove the hide class from newsletter topics, based on whether or not initial is true. In line 65, we disable the inputs if initial is false. And finally, starting in line 67, we toggle the visibility of topics based on whether the newsletter checkbox is checked. We've only seen a few of the validation methods provided by the jQuery validation plugin. 
Check out the documentation page for all the validation methods available. There are also a bunch of additional validation methods available at the URL shown here. For example, if you want to be able to enforce that a field is alphanumeric, you can download the alphanumeric.js file here and add it to your code. It's as easy as that. Even cooler, you can add your own methods. The documentation is at the URL shown here, but I'll show you an example now. The validator object has a method called add method, which takes two required arguments and one optional argument. The first required argument is the name. In this case, we're naming our method WebUcator Email. The second required argument is the function that will run to check whether or not the field is valid, and it will return true or false. And the third optional argument is the error message to display in the event of an error. You can see here our name is WebUcator Email. Our function will return true if this element is optional or if the value entered ends in WebUcator.com. The error message that we will display if the function returns false is only WebUcator.com email addresses are allowed. Now if we scroll up to our email, instead of setting email to true, we'll set WebUcator email to true. Now when we run this in the browser, if we submit without filling it out, we still get this field is required for the email. But if we enter an email address, that doesn't end in webucator.com. You see we get only webucator.com email addresses are allowed. There, when the email ends in webucator.com, the error goes away. So you can see it's quite simple to add your own methods for any specific validations you might want to have. The last thing I want to show you is how you can easily add localized error messages. You get the localization files at the URL shown here. I've grabbed the Spanish one and I'll show you how to add it to the common form so that the errors appear in Spanish. You can see the extra script tag that brings in messages underscore es dot js. That brings in our Spanish localization. And that's all there is to it. Watch what happens when I run the code in the browser. I'll just submit without filling anything out. And you can see all the errors are now in Spanish. You can't get any easier than that. Okay, that's all for this video. There's more to the jQuery validation plugin than I've shown you, so I encourage you to go and get it at jQueryvalidation.org and play around with it yourself. Enjoy.